Hello and good evening. I'm Otto Tausk, music director of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. Unfortunately, we can't perform for you live on stage, but music is still in our hearts, and so are you, our audiences. Tonight, we perform for you three pieces by Mozart, by Bach, and by Offenbach. And we present Henry Shepard, our new principal cellist, one of the youngest in North America. And to start off this evening, he has recorded Bach's air together with Nicholas Wright, our concertmaster. After that, you will hear Henry play together with Charles Ingman, a member of the cello section in the um, Valse from the duo for two celli by Offenbach. And after that, we hear Mozart's piano quintet. Now this piano quintet is actually referred to by Mozart as his very best piece. It's a piece for piano solo and wind instruments. Wind section from the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra played together with pianist Bogdan Dulu. And if you hang on after the performance, you can hear and meet the musicians in a discussion. Nicholas Wright, Beth Orson, and our new principal cellist, Henry Shepard, will talk about this fantastic music. Enjoy the evening. Thank you.
My name is Angela Elster, and I'm the president and CEO of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra and the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra School of Music. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Thank you for loving music. Thank you for purchasing tickets. Thank you for donating. Your support keeps the music going. We hope today you enjoy the music of Bach, Offenbach, and Mozart. And I wonder if you could find it in your heart to donate to the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra during this time of crisis so that we can keep the music alive and growing. We couldn't have imagined four weeks ago that we'd be visiting you in your homes, yet here we are. We're working hard to make sure the music stays alive and we're reaching out to you for help. And in fact, today, I'm delighted to announce that two of our longtime supporters, Irene McEwen and Martha Lou Henley, will match your donation dollar for dollar up to $50,000. Now that's a priceless gift. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the show. Visit us again at VSO at Home. And soon, I hope, I'll see you in the concert hall. Bye for now.
Hi everyone, I'm Nicholas Wright, Concertmaster. Um, hope you just enjoyed that performance there. So uh, I'm here in Vancouver with Beth Orson and we are very, very thrilled to uh, introduce you to Henry Shepard, who is with us from New York. Hi, uh, hi guys. Hi. Hi. So um, Henry, it's been a long time since we had a, a principal cello and uh, <laughs> We're really thrilled that uh, we found you and we're looking forward to joining us when we all get together. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and, 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 and maybe a little bit of the, the project that we, we sort of uh, we came up with and you came up with Charles. Yeah, so first of all, I would say, well, I'm very grateful to have been found um, because for me, this is really a, a dream position. Um, the VSO is a really extraordinary group of musicians, and I have come to realize over the last couple of months just how important the sense of sort of musical companionship is to the idea of the VSO, which is why, even though I'm not supposed to start until September, 
I really jumped at the opportunity to participate in some of these chamber music projects. Um, so during my, you know, my sort of hiring process, I did an audition in November of 2019. Um, and at the end of that audition, I was asked to do a trial week in January, at the end of January. So I came to Vancouver in January. Um, and then after that, um, I was asked to come back at the beginning of March um, to play another program and to also play through some standard rep um, principal cello solos with the orchestra. Um, that was really fun. And what I would say for me was the most rewarding thing about that whole experience was already developing really close connections to VSO members. Um, and so you'll note Nick and I <laughs> spent a lot of time together during those trial weeks, but um, have sort of carried that over now into the pandemic era. Um, <laughs> or, short, shortly after I officially accepted the position, Nick and I got in touch thinking it might be fun to do a, a project, the two of us. Um, we were, you know, Nick proposed the air on a G string and then quickly re we realized, you know, since we have a computer, why not just multiply each of us by two? Um, so that's exactly what we did. Um, so I promise that the VSO has not hired twins. Um, there's only one of me. Um, but for the quartet that we did, I play both the, the cello and the viola part. And, um, and Nick plays the, the first violin, the second violin part. It was really great to put together. Um, and it was neat getting the experience of kind of making a project like this in slow motion. Um, and then also to, you know, to, to rope in Charles Inkman here, Charles was one of the friendliest faces when I arrived in Vancouver um, and spent a lot of time talking cello stuff, VSO cello stuff, especially since he is, he's been in the VSO for 35 years. So he's been around the block. He's seen a lot. Um, and so I thought it would be really fitting to do a project with him too, um, to have sort of the whole musical spectrum um, and spectrum um, of experience in the VSO in a, just a duet. So you know, if you can't already tell, I'm just super enthusiastic about this whole process, the opportunity, and as, as challenging as the pandemic is, um, I'm still lucky that I've gotten the, the opportunity to share these musical experiences with VSO players right away. That's, yeah, that's great. It was, it was a lot of fun putting it together with you uh, too, Henry, yeah. Well, I think we, we both found that actually, or we, we, we thought we'd choose a relatively, uh, simple simple piece with with the buck and, and actually i think we found that that the slow pulse uh maybe works against you doesn't it when you when you're recording recording that way it does and i think what was funniest about that is when i did some of the preliminary editing to make sure that it would line up you can kind of watch it. it's like watching a train crash in slow motion if the parts don't line up you can see it on the audio waves before you hear it so I think it was it was especially satisfying when we managed to fit all of the pieces together, um, and I think the blend is pretty. Yeah, it's because it, it, it's it's Beth, it's Beth. It's so much what we do, isn't it? It's it's, it's the core of our, our job is to kind of play together in the same room and and to sort of feel <laughs> all nuances and and sort of be able to see in someone's you know see 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 in someone's eyes and know exactly when they're gonna change the bow or you know when I look over to the woodwind section and I can see and I can just you hear that tiny little slither of, of, of breath and you you know okay now now is when we're gonna when we're gonna play all of those things just disappear completely when you're when you're recording uh, remotely don't they they oh. they and I think it, it starts to feel a little bit more like like mind reading um and <laughs> I, I actually, I was, I, I was thinking about this because while we're putting it together, you realize, as Nick says, you don't get the physical or, or aural cues that you would normally depend on to play together with somebody. Um, so you really fall back on certain consistencies of playing style. Um, and I actually noticed that the takes that Nick and I had that matched up best, we weren't just matching the timing. Um, there were also other artistic decisions we were making that, that lined up. Um, but it does, it does make me think that when we all get back together to play in the same room, that we're going to be especially appreciative of the ability to feed off of each other. Um, cause I know, I know speaking only for myself, that that's something that I really miss. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But, um, 
I'm muting myself because my dogs are barking. Yeah. <laughs> but I did want to say that, you know, I've taught at the National Youth Orchestra of Canada for a long oh, Wait a minute. <laughs> Someone else talk until they, whoever's passing in front of my house leaves, they'll stop. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of dogs. <laughs> um, okay, you think we can rub them into a video? I don't <laughs> Maybe they're musical dogs. <laughs> they're very cute. <laughs> okay, it's, I think, no, give me one more, give it 30 seconds. Okay, there we go. I wanted to say that we begin at the National Youth Orchestra of Canada. That program begins with chamber music. And I think it, it's so funny, uh, Henry, because you're so young. <laughs> you might as well have been a student there. <laughs> but um, it is great. It's, it, I mean, it's become a very integral part of the way that program works so well, because you're beginning with chamber music, you get to know the people you're working with intimately, and then things get bigger and bigger, and eventually the orchestra comes together after like three weeks. Um, and particularly for the strings. That, that's part of the reason why they went that route. So I do find it, um, there's something kind of wonderful that that's how, in a way, you're starting the job, um, for sure. Well, it's, it's funny. It does, certain, it does certainly feel to me like a lot of this has sort of all, it, it's hit the right boundaries because I had, I, I, or it's hit the right markers because I had a conversation with a mentor of mine um, at Yale when I was getting ready to go for my second trial week because it was my first time playing Beethoven 5. And I remember we had this whole course conversation about, well, the most effective way to really be a, a string leader, especially in the context of Beethoven, is to sort of imagine that you're playing in a string quartet and to approach it like a quartet. And then here I am thinking, okay, well, this is great. I'm going to use the quartet chamber music mentality on the orchestra stage, but now it looks like I'm using chamber music mentality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think I think we all feel that way, don't we? The the, the playing chamber music it really it, it benefits the way uh, almost everything, doesn't it? it? It benefits how 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 we then go in and play in the orchestra, whether it doesn't matter where you're sitting, does it? But just that that ability to kind of listen really well um, that then sort of feeds into that larger ensemble. So yeah, it was it's great. Now, um, Beth, tell us a little bit about how the how the Mozart. Um, came together because this was done back in January, I think, before. Yes, pre pandemic. Um, yeah. The reason that uh, we have this recording is that uh, we played the Mozart, um, I think now two years ago for the VSO chamber players. Um, I, I, for the, it was funny, we, we played it at UBC on, the, uh, on our chamber music recital there, um, as well as on the VSO chamber players series, and we used two different pianists. Um, and so Bogdan had done the performance um, for UBC. He's on the faculty there, as well as at the VSO School of Music. And um, then I got hired, I got asked shortly after that to give a full oboe recital on the Maple Ridge Chamber Music Society um, series. And I had, I preferred to play a concert of chamber music and we'd already rehearsed Mozart. And so we did it again last year and we added the Beethoven Piano Wind Quintet which has the same instrumentation. It's very unusual, by the way. And I also, just to put a plug for the Mozart in particular, they're both, I mean, they're both wonderful pieces. But when Mozart wrote that piece in 1784, he wrote to his father and told him that he thought it was the greatest piece he had ever composed. Um, and it is an extraordinary um, work. Uh, it's, you know, very operatic and it's just the exquisite writing for winds. And, uh, and it was a year that he was, it was a year that Mozart was incredibly productive. He wrote like six piano concertos, a string quartet, I think two piano sonatas and two sets of variations as well. So he was in a really good place at 28 years old. Um, but um, anyway, so we wrote, we did, gave this full uh, recital last year on the Maple Ridge series. And then Bogdan, our pianist, um, was hoping to um, line up some more concerts. We actually were supposed to have done that full program in January on at, on the islands, on um, Hornby Island and Denmark, Denman, and that there was a blizzard. So they got canceled. So we rescheduled for May. So now we'll have to cancel again because of a pandemic. Um, but he wanted us to get together and just record the some of the two quintets and just so that he'd have it for some marketing. And so that's why we have them. And they and we just ran them down. I mean, there's no editing. We just went in, played the two quintets and left. And, you know, 
So, but when we remembered they were available, that's how, that's why we have them. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, I, well, I think, I think we're, um, Henry, you and I are, are very lucky with the, with the amount of chamber music available to us, aren't, aren't we? But I, I know, I know the winds, uh, slightly less, slightly less, um, to pick from, but, but yeah, that, that's a gem, isn't it? So, um, it sounded beautiful. So, um, this was uh, great to see you guys, and I, I can't wait until we actually are all together again in the same room. <laughs> yeah, me too. That, yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah. So, um, beautiful uh, performances. Thank you for this. And um, to everyone out there, thank you to our subscribers, our donors, um, our sponsors. Um, and if you haven't had a chance yet to donate to the, to the VSO, then, then please do, because we need your help more than ever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick.